Animal Farm, as its author later wrote, was the first book in which I tried, with full consciousness of what I was doing, to fuse political purpose and artistic purpose into one whole. And indeed, its pages contain a synthesis of many of the themes that we've come to think of as Orwellian. Like much of his later work, most conspicuously the much grimmer 1984, Animal Farm was the product of Orwell's engagement in the Spanish Civil War. During the course of that conflict, in which he had fought on the anti-fascist side and been wounded and then chased out of Spain by supporters of Joseph Stalin, his experiences had persuaded him that the majority of left opinion was wrong and that the Soviet Union was a new form of hell and not an emerging utopia. He described the genesis of the idea in one of his two introductions to Animal Farm. For the past ten years, I have been convinced that the destruction of the Soviet myth was essential if we wanted a revival of the socialist movement. On my return from Spain, I thought of exposing the Soviet myth in a story that could be easily understood by almost anyone and which could be easily translated into other languages. However, the actual details of the story did not come to me for some time until one day, I was then living in a small village, I saw a little boy, perhaps ten years old, driving a huge cart horse along a narrow path, whipping it whenever it tried to turn. It struck me that if only such animals became aware of their strength, we should have no power over them, and that men exploit animals in much the same way as the rich exploit the proletariat. I proceeded to analyze Marx's theory from the animal's point of view. The apparently beautiful simplicity of this notion is in many ways deceptive, by undertaking such a task, Orwell was choosing to involve himself in an extremely complex and bitter argument about the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, then a far more controversial issue than it is today. The book was written at the height of the Second World War, and at a time when the pact between Stalin and Hitler had been replaced abruptly by an alliance between Stalin and the British Empire. London was under Nazi bombardment, and the original manuscript of the novel had to be rescued from the wreckage of Orwell's blitzed home in North London. The cynical way in which Stalin had switched sides had come as no surprise to Orwell, who was by then accustomed to the dishonesty and cruelty of the Soviet regime. This put him in a fairly small minority, both within official Britain and among the British left. A considerable number of progressive persons still believed that communist collectivization of Russian agriculture had benefited the peasants, and maintained that Stalin's judicial murder of his former political comrades had constituted a fair trial. Orwell had not visited the USSR, but he had seen the Spanish version of Stalinism at close quarters, and broadly took the side of the left opposition, or Trotskyist forces whose perspective is expounded by a four-legged character in this book. With a few slight alterations to the sequence of events, the action approximates to the fate of the 1917 generation in Russia. Thus, the grand revolutionary scheme of the veteran Boer old major, Karl Marx, is at first enthusiastically adopted by almost all creatures, leading to the overthrow of Farmer Jones, the Tsar, the defeat of the other farmers who come to his aid, the now-forgotten Western invasions of Russia in 1918 to 1919, and the setting up of a new model state. In a short time, the more ruthless and intelligent creatures, naturally enough the pigs, have the other animals under their dictatorship and are living like aristocrats. Inevitably, the pigs argue among themselves. The social forces represented by different animals are easily recognizable. Boxer, the noble horse, as the embodiment of the working class. Moses, the raven, as the Russian Orthodox Church. As are the identifiable individuals played by different pigs. The rivalry between Napoleon, Stalin, and Snowball, Trotsky, ends with Snowball's exile and the subsequent attempt to erase him from the memory of the farm. Stalin had the exiled Trotsky murdered in Mexico less than three years before Orwell began work on the book. Some of the smaller details are meticulously exact. Due to the exigencies of the war, Stalin had made various opportunistic compromises. He had recruited the Russian Orthodox Church to his side, the better to cloak himself in patriotic garb, 
and he was to abolish the old socialist anthem, the Internationale, for being too provocative to his new capitalist allies in London and Washington. In Animal Farm, Moses the Raven is allowed to come croaking back as the crisis deepens, and the poor exploited goats and horses and hens are told that their beloved song, Beasts of England, is no longer to be sung. Orwell's rendition of those yearning and touching verses was one of the many ways in which he managed to keep the essentially tragic narration relatively light. This is also one of the very few of his works to contain any jokes. After the revolution, the animals discover some hams hanging in Jones's kitchen and take them outside for decent burial. The first time they take a vote on the rights of non-domestic animals, the farm's cat is found to have voted on both sides. There is, however, one very salient omission. There is a Stalin pig and a Trotsky pig, but no Lenin pig. Similarly, in 1984, we find only a Big Brother Stalin and an Emanuel Goldstein Trotsky. Nobody appears to have pointed this out at the time, and if I may say so, nobody but myself has done so since. It took me years to notice what was staring me in the face. In the 1930s and the 1940s, and indeed for some decades afterward, there was a very hot dispute about whether or not Stalin's terror was a direct consequence of Lenin's revolution, and also speculation concerning the likelihood, or otherwise, that Trotsky would have been better than Stalin. Orwell had broadly Trotskyist sympathies, but did not necessarily believe that any one form of Russified communism would have been superior to another. Uncharacteristically for him then, and possibly for the sake of simplicity, he seems to have decided to let this evident contradiction remain unaddressed. Orwell predicted, as on other occasions, that the ostensible friendship between East and West would not long outlast the defeat of Nazism. The Cold War, a phrase that Orwell himself was the first to use in print, in an especially acute feuilleton entitled You and the Atomic Bomb in Tribune in October 1945, soon created a very different ideological atmosphere. This in turn conditioned the reception of Animal Farm in the United States. The Afterlife of Animal Farm Probably the best-known sentence from the novel is the negation by the pigs of the original slogan that all animals are equal, by the addition of the afterthought that some animals are more equal than others. As communism in Russia and Eastern Europe took on more and more of the appearance of a new class system with grotesque privileges for the ruling elite and a grinding mediocrity of existence for the majority, the moral effect of Orwell's work, so simple to understand and to translate, precisely as he had hoped, became one of the many unquantifiable forces that eroded communism both as a system and as an ideology.